Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Pedro Moreno from Mount Sinai Hospital. Uh, we're going to move into the next session. Guess I just arrived. I think uh, is Gilbert Tang here. Gilbert is not here. So um, we're here, Gilbert. You you see me? I'm sorry. Do you hear me? I I don't hear you. Just we need better volume. Fantastic, fantastic, Gilbert. Okay, thank you. Well, thanks very much for accommodating me here off-site. Uh, it's my pleasure to talk about the trials of tricuspid valve technologies in 2020. Where are we now? Here are my disclosures. So we know that tricuspid regurgitation is not a benign phenomenon. Whether you are symptomatic or asymptomatic, uh, severe TL leads to worse survival and more cardiac events. We also know that even patients with severe MR after mitral clip, if they have persistent severe TL, the one-year mortality is quite high, almost 40%. But however, at the same time, only about 0.4% of TL patients are being treated today, and majority of them are functional or secondary TR. You can see here, out of around over 1.6 million patients consider moderate or greater TR, only about 12,000 procedures have been reported uh, based on the STS database. So the principle of tricuspid repair in surgery is to, first of all, ensure leaflet cooperation and mobility. You want to stabilize the annulus and avoid conduction injury. Here are some of the techniques that have been used before among surgeons to repair a tricuspid valve. And now most of the time we would use annuloplasty on the top left corner as the default strategy. However, there are a lot of transcapital tricuspid devices out in the horizon, and you can see here, we can categorize them into four broad areas based on the surgical techniques, including valve replacement. There are a lot of challenges in terms of designing these devices and trials, because first of all, there's patient population is very heterogeneous. You have patients who have isolated tricuspid disease and those who have double valve, mitral, and tricuspid disease. The quality imaging is a prerequisite because you have to see what you're doing with the tricuspid valve to be able to target a particular strategy. The imaging requirements of parameters, however, vary from device to device. The anatomic criteria as well vary by devices in terms of what is considered feasible for repair. And finally, the clinical endpoints is harder to define, unlike TAVR or even transcaptor mitral therapy. So in terms of when may tr transcaptor over surgery repair well, uh, refer, well, there's currently no FDA-approved device in the United States right now for transcaptor tricuspid repair. Typically, these patients are enrolled into trial or compassionate use. They're typically high prohibitive risk for surgery. They need to have tr favorable tricuspid anatomy and also good TEE imaging. Uh, the RV lead in the presence of either CRT or ICD or pacemaker is not a contraindication, but it does limit the imaging options. And however, we do avoid the end stage cardiomyopathy patients, which with severe dilated annulus or right ventricle with very poor function. So here's an excellent review paper on imaging published in Jack, looking at transferosic and TEE imaging of the tricuspid valve. And now there's an excellent JAP imaging review on intraprocedural imaging of transcaptor tricuspid valve interventions. You can see here, depending on the type of therapy you try to use and the device, the imaging modalities are quite different. Of course, echo is only one uh, imaging modality. There's also multi-imaging modalities such as CT and fluoroscopy. And you can see this is an excellent review published recently on this regard. This is a CT reconstruction of the coronary anatomy because the tricuspid annulus is very close to the right coronary. You certainly don't want to uh, kink it like in this particular uh, image here after a surgical annuloplasty. There have been a number of devices that have first in human experience as outlined here, beginning from a replacement device in 2010 to more recently 2017 with some repair devices. And they typically approach from a number of uh, anatomy. So you can see SVC, IVC, transapical, or transatrial, but they typically target three anatomies, either the leaflets, the tricuspid annulus, or even the inferior vena cava. You can see this is a multi-center international registry on patients who underwent transcaptor tricuspid therapy, and you can see majority of them 
underwent mitra clip to repair the tricuspid valve because that's the only commercially available devices at the time. In terms of the anterior tricuspid repair, you can see most of them are done off-label. Uh, it's not approved in the United States. You can see over 600 cases have been done in Europe and over 300 in the United States. The outcome does vary by anatomy and pathology. Here's a patient, an example, 89-year-old female on dialysis, very frail. She applied pacemaker implantation at the posterior septal commissure. The patient was uh, initially tried to be screened for a feasibility study. However, because she was on dialysis, she was declined. Here you can see here the baseline T showing torrential TR. So despite her age of dialysis, she's actually quite functional, still uh, drives on her own and lives independently. So we felt that we might be worthwhile, depending on the imaging quality, to attempt transcaptic tricuspid repair. You can see the RV info X-plane view uh, showing severe torrential TR. You can see 3D imaging as well. You can see also the pacemaker lean on the around eight o'clock position, tucked at the posterior septal commissure, so away from the main part of the leaflet. This is a main view of the tricuspid valve anatomy. You can call it transgastric short axis view. We explain here, showing also torrential TL and where the anatomy that we might try to target. With the advances in TE imaging, you can see now we can do what we call a transgastric multi view that you can essentially uh, line up your imaging across the tricuspid analyst so you can target the leaflets accurately and confidently during grasping. For the intracardial echo here, you can see it's also come a long way. You can see this is torrential TR for the same anatomy that we saw earlier on TEE. And you can see that with multi-plane reconstruction, you can identify specific pair of tricuspid leaflets to target for your edge-to-edge -edge repair. So here's the mitral XTL targeting the anterior septal uh, leaflet. You can see on the left side of the, the TEE that there's a clip lined up at around two to eight o'clock position. And then on the right side, the, the clip has been closed. And you can see that it's confirmed on the uh, ice as well. You can see the clip on the left side in the atrium and the right side, the right ventricle, being able to see how the leaflets get inserted. And you can see this is the leaflets being confirmed and closed. You can see this is on TEE, on this multi-view, being able to show exactly how the leaflets are inserted into the clip so you can confirm optimal insertion. And this is the final result before on the left side and afterwards with two clips, certainly both of torrential or at least mild, mild moderate TR, very acceptable result. And you can see here, again, the before the transparency echo at the right side after two clips, you can see the TR is significantly reduced. This is the latest uh, results of the Triluminate, which is the early feasibility multi-center global feasibility study on the one-year result that just got presented at London Valve, and I'm one of the investigators for this study. You can see here this tricip device was using the anti, so it's the shorter clip arms, but it's dedicated for tricuspid position. You can see the study design is an early feasibility study with uh, 21 sites in the US and Europe, and the goal is to reduce the TR grade by one at 30 days per procedure. These are the inclusion and exclusion criteria, just in the interest of time to afford this. You can see from a procedural standpoint, all 85 patients enrolled in the study, majority of them had two clips, and majority of them, 77% targets at the septal position. Baseline characteristic that these patients are typically younger and more interestingly, more female, but also at the same time, 96% of them had pre-existing atrial fibrillation, and certainly relatively high euro score. These are the results you can see in one year compared to the baseline where only 4% of patients had moderate or less TR. You can see at one year, 64% has that sustained uh, TR reduction. And you can also see here the improvement in MIHA class at one year has also significantly improved and sustained. KCCQ score is important from the quality of life standpoint. We can see the significant improvement in 30 days of sustained in one year, and same as the six minute walk test. More importantly, we found that the clipping caused the TR not only to reduce, but also reduces the right ventricular dimension. You can see on the left uh, graph, and also the fractional area change. There were very few major adverse events you can see at one year in three. There were no cardiovascular mortality at 30 days, and only three at one year, no stroke, and no onset renal failure or surgery. 
You can also see here the no deal, uh, that device related safety events beyond 30 days. So in summary, at least a tricuspid clip uh, system, at least one grade reduction was sustained in 87% of the subjects in one year. There's low major adverse event rate with significant quality of life improvement. And we look forward to newer data as we follow these patients up to five years. The pivotal study now in the United States is a randomized control study. You can see 450 subjects uh, with Dr. Adams and Dr. Soraja as the national co-PI. And you can see here that the randomized arm consists of patient uh, either randomized between triclip repair or medical therapy. And the primary endpoint is a composite mortality or tricuspid surgery, high fill of hospitalization and quality of life improvement based on KCCQ. There's also a single arm which uh, based on the clippability of the patient, if the patient cannot be expected to have a one grade reduction, then they will go into a single arm. These are the inclusion criteria, you can see that. This is based on not just the patient uh, clinical characteristics, but also clippability, meaning the anatomy and the imaging has to be suitable. And you can see these are exclusion criteria, so severe pulmonary hypertension, uncontrolled hypertension, very poor ejection fraction, and of course, if you have indication to fix other valves, they should do so prior to being considered for this trial. And also, of course, anatomy is critical. The Pascal system is another edge, edge repair system. This is uh, with a device that has a spacer in the middle with independent uh, grip, grip arms uh, to be able to grasp the leaflet separately. And you can see it is a 22 French system. And you can see there's a compassion use experience that I'm gonna report briefly here. You can see our 28 patients, the procedural success is excellent, 86%. Uh, with 90% of the time, they actually use the independent leaflet grasping mechanisms. And there's no mortality and no surgery in 30 days. Uh, actually, there were two mortality 30 days. There was just procedural mortality. There was zero stroke and really zero conversion to surgery or reintervention, at least in this small cohort. Just like the tri-clip, there was a negative reduction in TR severity of 30 days. You can see here, this is still early data, no one-year data yet. It's certainly some promising. And also include a uh, six-minute walk test as well. So out of the edge edge repair, there's also the Edwards Cardio Bench Tricuspid Undergoing Feasibility Study. Right now, you can see this is a direct angioplasty device that you can cinch to reduce the tricuspid analyst to reduce the TR. And you can see there is an early feasibility study currently conducted in the United States. Uh, these are the primary endpoints and the secondary endpoints. And you can see here our 22 patients that reported so far. Again, interestingly, more of them are female. They have majority of atrial fibrillation, atrial arrhythmias, and also most of them do not have significant pulmonary hypertension. You can see our 22 patients, really the procedure is very safe, no stroke, no cardiovascular mortality, and no conversion to surgery either. So with a very high technical success. And you can see, interestingly, at least 30 days based on a small number of patients, in the pair analysis, there is a sustained reduction at a tricuspid analyst resulting a good reduction in TR at 30 days based on a small group of patients, and also improvement in quality of life and MIHA class. So the authors conclude based on this early feasibility that uh, at least with the annual plastic device with the cardioband system, it does show good safety uh, and performance in patients and with stable results at 30 days. Gilbert, I'm sorry, we, we're gonna have to wrap around because of time, yeah. just, yeah. Yeah, we're finishing up here, so uh, I just want to take uh, care of a take-home message, which means that severe TR, if you're treated, carries a poor prognosis. The transcaptor tricuspid repair is at infancy, but early results are promising. I think, as you can see, imaging is the key to patient selection and procedural success, and really 4D eyes will complement the 4D TEE during the procedure. I think the hard team discussion is important, and early evaluation is also just as important. Thank you for your attention.